Yeah, welcome everyone to my presentation. Uh, my name is Tobias Jeske and I will talk about floating card data from smartphones, what Google and Waze know about you and how hackers can control traffic. Um, before we start, a few words about myself. So I've studied computer science and electrical engineering. I'm doing now my PhD in IT security at the Hamburg University of Technology and yeah, you have probably noticed my uh, strong accent, so I'm a German. Um, yeah, I'm nearly finished with my PhD, so if you have a job office or so, feel free to contact me. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the agenda of my talk. I first will give you an introduction, give you some background information about um, the Google protocol and, and, and ways. Then I will talk about the protocol analysis I have done. So the starting point was um, this mobile phone here, the standard Android phone. And I've heard that this Android phones, they send um, the current position uh, of this phone from time to time to the Google server. And I wanted to know how this work, yeah, concrete. Um, yeah, I've also, at the bonus, I've also analyzed uh, the waste protocol. Um, after I've analyzed the protocol, I have evaluated the protocol regarding the privacy and authenticity requirement. Um, so if you look at this scenario, as a user, you usually have an, a strong interest in your privacy. You don't want that you can be tracked, for example, by Google. And if you look on the Google side, Google has an interest that it only um, gets yeah, correct data from smartphones. So you don't want, as Google, that someone sent you uh, fake data. Um, so yeah, I've did this evaluation. And um, yeah, both requirements were not are not really fulfilled. So I've thought there could be a better way of um, of doing it. So in the last part of my talk, I will give you a um, solution to this problem. Well, hopefully, a solution. Um, yeah. So if you Today, if you have a navigation device, then um, yeah, probably it will receive traffic reports on the traffic message channel called TMC. So this TMC data is transmitted over a radio station. And so the, the main source of this traffic reports are well, the police, or some other sources. But yeah, it works so, so if there's an accident, um, a traffic jam somewhere, the, the uh, police reports it to a TMC provider. The TMC provider forwards this information to the radio station, and then it's broadcast to all navigation devices. And then if your navigation devices receive such a message, it will probably will calculate a detour. Um, yeah, TMC is quite widespread. But um, often a problem is that these traffic reports are out of date. So I'm not driving so often, but once I, also make, I made the experience, I was at night, I was on the highway, and I was nearly the only car on this highway, and my navigation system tries to, um, yeah, to, so that I take a, another route because it, it told me there's a, a traffic jam. Another problem is the low transfer rate. So you can only think transfer 16 bytes per second. Um, yeah. In 2007, with two researchers, Andrea Barisiani and Daniel Bianco, they have shown how to, to counterfeit TMC messages. This was um, it's quite easy possible on the, on the one hand side, because the TMC data is not um, transmitted encrypted. On the other side, you need um, special equipment for this attacks, and it only works locally. 
um, yeah, Google Live Traffic in uh, 2007. Google added Google Live Traffic to Google Maps. So Google Maps, you probably all know. Um, if you open Google um, Maps on the right side, you can click on traffic information and then all the, the roads are colored in red, um, green and orange. So red means there's a traffic jam or heavy traffic. Green means uh, free roads and orange is, yeah, there's something in between. I've already um, told you that the position data comes from smartphones with Android operating system and it is uh, real-time traffic information. This data is also called floating car data. And yeah, the next cool thing in 2011, Google um, live traffic has been used to optimize the route calculations in Google navigation. So um, yeah, you can see on the, on the right hand side, so this, there's a thread, there's a traffic jam. Then if you use Google navigation for, um, to navigate, then Google Navigation will calculate a detour for you. Of course, this is a, a little bit of a bad example, but I think you can you get my my idea. Um, Waze is um, similar to to Google Maps. It is an um, open source uh, application. It runs on yeah a little bit more. Uh, platforms and then Google Mobile and um, it's quite popular so um, if you go to the to the website of Waze they say they have uh, 36 million users end of 2012. Um, in comparison to Google Maps it also has an, an interactive component so users can directly report, for example, um, speed traps also from the, via the, the waste map to um, waste. Yeah, now we come to the, to the protocol analysis. So, um, yeah, the first thing uh, what I've done was I have installed uh, um, a normal um, packet sniffer on my rooted Android phone and yeah, collect all the outgoing traffic. And there were some packets uh, which are suspicious because they go to, to this URL here. And um, yeah, if you look at it, so lock, that probably means location and mobile. But the problem was this S here. So it's using TLS and all the data is encrypted so you can't read it. And the next thing what I've done, I uh, perform a man in the middle attack using this tool here, Mitten Proxy. This is uh, quite nice, written in Python. And um, yeah, use my, my Android 4 uh, phone, install the, the root certificates from Mitten Proxy. You can install on this, install on the phone and you configure a, a system-wide proxy server so that all the, the traffic is, is routed over um, this Mitchum proxy command. So this is yeah, it's pretty, pretty um, standard. In um, Android 4, it was quite easy to, to perform this attack. I first tried it on Android 2, and it, yeah, it was really horrible, but um, then I've, Worked on this a couple of months ago, so I just have Android uh, 2 telephone, but then I have Android 4 telephone, it was much more easier, especially if you want to install your own certificates on the phone, and you don't want to install only browser certificates. So. Yeah, so then I've um, analyzed the packets. So this is a, a screenshots from, the, from my first trials. And so you look at it and yeah, okay, then you can read it, but uh, it tells you, uh, me it tells uh, nothing, so I don't know what to do. And um, the next step, I've looked in the, the Google sources to find something. Um, 
yeah, but I couldn't couldn't find something in the latest version. There were no no um, no code which is related to um, to this um, location provider. Um, then I've looked in the in the internet and I found some one of the first Android versions, so two, 0 0.6 beta or so. I found it on on, on one server in the internet, and um, actually at the first the first version they released this um, this code was was included in the sources, so I could um, could find out that Google um, uses called uh, MASF. So it stands for Mobile Application Sensing Framework. They call it uh, this way. And yeah, I could figure out that the, the red part here, this is a, a MASF header. Um, yeah, the protocol is a simple request response protocol. So you send something to Google and then you get a response message uh, back from Google. Um, before I go a little bit more into the details of the protocol, um, just want to explain the, the Google protocol in a nut, nutshell. So um, it works so that the smartphone sends uh, Google the status information of the GPS, wireless, and mobile unit. And um, yeah, the data amount depends on the configuration of your mobile phone. So yeah, either if it's activated or not, or if you, well, maybe um, old phones, they don't have a GPS receiver, then of course no data from the GPS receiver can be um, transmitted to, to Google. And um, yeah, then you send the request message sent to Google and the response you get from Google contains, not always, but uh, usually contains uh, the approximate um, location of the phone. And the idea is this, uh, yeah, like this win-win situation. So this, you send uh, Google, give Google, Google the data, and you will get um, back the, the yeah, location of the phone. And if you then, for example, switch on Google Maps, want to um, determine your position, then it goes a lot faster than if you only use um, GPS, for example. Um, yeah, this is um, how such uh, mass request message uh, looks like. It's not so spectacular. So um, yeah, you have some, some fixed part. Then you have the name of the application. I will later can give you an example how it exactly look like. Then you have this strange cookie here and um, yeah, two different types of, of blocks. Um, so this is, um, this is a plain block. This is quite um, not so easy to figure this out because sometimes you get this message and sometimes you get this message. But if you look in the um, payload, then sometimes it contains a, a zip header. So um, yeah, it was quite obvious that in, um, that this is a, the zipped version. So if the payload um, size is over a specific threshold, the data is um, transmitted, compressed. Um, yeah, this is a, the response message. Um, yeah, it's also not quite so not so spectacular. The only thing is you also have this um, ID field here and this you all also have in the request messages and with this, um, these two messages are linked um, together. Um, now we look at the, at the payload. Um, Google uses um, protocol buffers to encode the payload. Um, this is actually clear because um, the protocol buffers, this format was developed by Google. So yeah, that's the reason why they are, of course, they, they use it. And um, yeah, it's used to serialize um, data structure. Um, for those who don't know, um, have never heard about protocol buffers, 
it's um, it's a binary format and it's um, optimized for high processing speed and data density. So Google says it's 30 to 100 times I think faster than XML. I don't know if this is the case, but it's a binary format, so it should be fast. Um, yeah, and the, the good thing is it's open source since July 2008, so you find a lot of libraries to, to pass, um, automatically pass um, this, um, um, your protocol buffers encoded uh, data. But you still have to um, describe um, or give this parser a format description. So it's not only that you can give this data to these parser engines and, and, and you get um, the, the data out of it. Um, yeah, the request um, uh, message, as I've said, contains um, zero, one or more profiles from the mobile unit, Wi-Fi, and location unit. And um, it also contains a platform profile. And this platform profile, um, yeah, first it contains the, the name of the platform. So you find something like this. This is the, 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 the firmware, contains the firmware of, um, of your Android phone. And what is quite important, especially for, for if you evaluate the, the privacy, is this platform key. And that is used as a, as a, or as a pseudonym, and this can um, yeah, track your, your smartphone. Um, as I've said, in the response message, find the, the current position, if possible. And Google also gives you the location of, um, of access points and radio towers around the location of your smartphone. And the response message can also contain a new platform key. So I figured out if you send a request message to, to Google without this platform key, then um, Google is so nice and create a new one for you. So I've tried it with a, um, with a fresh uh, um, smartphone. So I just uh, load up the firmware and um, bring it online and then the first uh, message contains no platform key and then if you look then at the response message it contains uh, the, the missing platform key. Yeah, this is some, some um, um, it's a, the description file for the, for the protocol uh, buffers parser. So it doesn't contain everything. It's just an Except what I've uh, re-engineered, because the thing is, in the so I had the sources of the first Android version, but it doesn't contain everything. So if you have a, a recent Android phone, uh, Google added a lot of uh, more stuff to it. So I've um, yeah, some parts are from the first Android version, and then a lot of stuff I've um, yeah just re-engineered. So I I cannot. I'm not uh, cannot say to 100% that these are the correct values, but it's if you look at it, then um, yeah, it seems to be that these are the values. So, um, but the most important one is of course uh, the platform key. Um, yeah, and the response message. It's actually as I've said, so it's the other way around. Um, in the request message you send information of your um, access uh, um, of your Wi-Fi unit and so to to Google and the in the response message you give uh, you get back information uh, location information about the surrounding access points wi uh, um, radio towers and so on yeah the the waste protocol it's also a simple request response protocol Source code is released under the GPL. Um, position data, the difference is transmitted in the clear. So it makes it quite easy and TLS is only used for, for login. Uh, also used uh, mit dem proxy to record packets. Uh, transmitted data is just an encoded ASCII string. Um, 
and the protocol is quite quite simple. So you just um, log into Waze, then you get a server ID and a cookie from the server, and then all the the next messages, the subsequent messages you send to Waze contain the ID and the the cookie. So here's an example. Um, yeah, so you have the, the server, server ID, the, co uh, the cookie, and then, for example, you have here a GPS pass, which um, um, yeah, uh, contains the, the, um, a bunch of, um, of um, yeah, locations. Yeah, now we come um, to the evaluation. Part. So I've, I've visualized the, the, the information which is um, sent to Google. So, um, yeah, it was uh, in the night I, I took the car and I drove, it's in the middle of Hamburg, and I drove this, this route here. So the, the dashed line here that comes from the GPS logger, um, it is also... Um, Besides a small tracking error, the track, which is um, um, the location information, which is sent to to Waze, and this is um, blue and and red circles. These are the the measurement points sent to to Google. So in this scenario, everything was switched on. So GPS was switched on, and Wi-Fi was switched on, and at uh, two. Um, mobile phones, the same mobile phones, so and um, yeah, run in parallel, so I, I um, drove this track here. So um, yeah, sometimes uh, the gaps between the um, these two measurements points are higher. Um, that's not really deterministic, so it's, I don't know, sometimes it's sending faster uh, location information but um, one have to consider that, for example, here I was driving very fast, and here, for example, I was quite slow. So, actually, here's a very famous speed trap in Hamburg, so I have to go a little bit slower. Um, yeah, this scenario was not so realistic because usually you switched um, a GPS is switched off. But um, yeah, a lot of people leave uh, wireless LAN on, probably not. You here in the audience, but yeah, a lot of people just leave it on. And um, so in this scenario, I'm living around here. This was a normal, or not a normal day, day in my life. So I live around here, and here's my work. And so I've started here. Then I took the, the commuter train, goes this way. And um, so it goes goes here and here at this point I come out of uh, the tunnel so then it gets gets signal so it immediately send the, the current uh, position to um, to Google and if you look at, at this position here there's um, the Institute where I'm working in and there I've, I've stayed uh, um, a few hours so on this other the the timestamp and then I went back oops so, I, but I didn't went uh, home. I went to the um, to the University of Hamburg. So there's a library. I sit there. If you look at this location, and if you look at this location, the, then you could find out that there's the um, canteen of the University of Hamburg. So I eat something, and then I uh, went back home. Yeah. So um, yeah. The as I've said, so the platform key is generated by Google after the first start, um, but uniquely identify the phone and never changes. Uh, so, uh, well, I don't know. So this, I tested a few uh, days, weeks, and it always keeps the same. I try to reboot my phone and always um, keeps the same. Um, another observation I have made is um, so um, you don't have to use Google Maps, so everything um, can be switched on, or, uh, off. No um, apps running on the on the phone. Um, 
yeah, then yeah, every mass method has a, has a, a sequence number for sequential ordering. Um, is a, if you use the the ways app, the ways app um, sends uh, a bunch of position data using this um, GPS pass uh, um, message or field in the um, message, and on, or could also send a single location to the to the way server. And yeah, because every message to the server contains this unique server ID. A uh, server cookie and the server ID, so it's quite um, easy for ways to relate the position data to the um, to your user account. What is actually a, um, a feature if you're using ways? They want this because then you can co compare yourself with other people and say like uh, I've drove I don't know 20 kilometers and the other one only drove 30 kilo uh, drove 10 kilometers or so. Yeah, now we look at the at the other side, at the provider side, so at Google side. So that's a, um, a picture from a highway uh, cam. Um, so the roads are clear. So usually in Hamburg, there's a lot more traffic. Um, so yeah, what you can do is you can you can send uh, faked data to the to the Google server um, to produce something, for example, like here. So we have sent some some uh, fake data to Google, and then you can uh, manipulate the traffic flow um, analysis. Yeah, the the TLS tunnel ensures data integrity. Yeah, but um, yeah, what happens if the, the old problem if the attacker controls um, the beginning of the TLS tunnel? So as an attacker, you can randomly select a cookie. And um, yeah, the platform key is generated by Google, so it doesn't look really random. I don't know what it contains, but um, as I've said, you just send a request message to Google, um, which doesn't contain a, a platform key, and then Google is so nice and uh, sends you a new platform key back. So the result of this is that the attacker can stay anonymous. So if you then think as an attacker, you can you can drive a route, collect data packets, and um, yeah, you can replay them later with changed timestamps. And you can think of um, by intensifying the attack by using or um, by simulating several cars, you can add noise to the measured uh, value, you can use uh, different uh, IP addresses, yeah, botnets or whatever. And so at the end, um, you can, as an attacker, you can achieve it that um, Google can't distinguish between real and fake location information. Um, yeah, an attacker can make people drive into traffic jams or keep roads clear if traffic data is used for navigation. And um, yeah, the main important difference with TMC attack that you don't need uh, special equipment for this. And another point is you can theoretically manipulate um, the traffic data worldwide. Uh, this attack scenario can also be applied to ways, but um, yeah, it is is a little bit more difficult, so to say, because it's always linked to a user account. Um, but Waze offers a possibility to send anonymous uh, data to them. But I don't know if they're really using it, because in Waze is quite popular, I think, in the US or so, but in, in Germany, no one is using it. So I've checked uh, a, a few days, I've checked Waze for Hamburg, and the, the Hamburg is a very big city, and there was really nothing. So, yeah, I couldn't really um, try this out. Um, yeah, this I will, I think I will, will skip because it's obsolete. So when I've um, I've visualized the data points, and I've uh, found uh, um, yeah, it's not a bug or 
security, uh, a privacy threat. Also, um, so there's a um, Google has this network location provider protocol where you can send um, the the um, the MAC addresses of your of surrounding um, uh, access points to Google, and then Google calculates um, the the a location for you. And there was this guy here, uh, Sami Kamka. He found out that you can only send one MAC address to Google, and then you get back the the location of this access point. Um, so then Google has fixed it, and um, I then find out that, okay, you have to send two MAC addresses um, to, the, to, the, uh, to Google, but um, the second one can also be an unknown access point. So if the, unknown, if the access point is unknown, then Google will just um, will accept it and calculate the position of the, the access point, uh, send it back, which um, um, Google knows. But um, yeah, we talked to the um, um, how to say privacy commissioner in Germany, and um, yeah, this bug has been fixed by Google. So yeah, now um, yeah, what can you do to to do it better? So I'm uh, not a big fan of breaking everything and then say uh, yeah, I've also want to try to find uh, yeah, new solutions for, for, for problems. Um, so as a um, repetition, so again, we have these, um, these two requirements. So first we have the, the privacy requirement. This is um, Usually for the for the smartphone owner, if you if you have a smartphone, you are interested in a high degree of privacy. You don't want that um, Google can um, can track you. And on the other side, you have the authenticity requirement by the provider like Google. Um, so Google has an interest in the in the correctness of the data, so the data must be um, yeah, authenticated um, in some way. Um, so you want to the idea. So you want to exclude malicious um, smartphones from the calculation of the traffic flow. And um, yeah, incorrect traffic data influences the user navigation, and so this means then. Hackers can affect the traffic flow. Um, yeah, you might think, okay, this that hackers can affect the traffic flow. I mean, today it is not really relevant because not so many people using um, Google navigation. But um, yeah, if you look at um, at other solutions, um, um, other navigation systems from other vendors. They actually implementing the same concept, so that um, the car sending the actual um, the current position to a to a provider, and then the provider calculates um, the the does the the traffic flow analysis, and then uh, send back the results to the navigation system, and then the nav navigation system um, will calculate a detour if there's a um, <coughs> traffic jam or so. Yeah, I just want to give you a very roughly description how you can can solve this um, because it's quite relatively well, that's a lot of mathematics is is needed for this. But I, I remove all the mathematics. Just want to show you the 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 yeah the main concepts. I think this is this is more important. Um, if you never heard about um, it. These, um, the solution is based on zero knowledge, uh, proof of knowledge. So, what is a zero knowledge proof of knowledge? Um, a zero knowledge proof of knowledge is a proof of knowledge, and a proof of knowledge it's a proof between a prover and a verifier that a mathematical statement is true. And if the honest 
If the prover behaves honest, you always can convince the verifier, and if he's dishonest, he can't um, convince um, the, the verifier with overwhelming probability. Um, a zero-knowledge proof of knowledge, it's, uh, yeah, it says it's a proof of knowledge where verifier obtains no further information from the prover other than the fact um, that the prover knows the solution of the underlying mathematical hard problem. So to give you an example, to, to understand how these uh, proofs work, um, you can think of uh, a server authentic, uh, so um, as a user authentication to a server. So usually if you authenticate yourself to a server, you have a username and you have a password. So with the username, you say who you are, and with the password, um, you prove that you are who you claim to be. Um, if you think about it, then for a lot of applications, you are actually sending more, you, yeah, you send more information to the server than necessary. Because on, on some um, um, privacy-related applications, you only want to um, you only want to prove that you have access, nothing more, but you give a lot more information about you. Because you, for example, you, you tell the server who you are, and this is um, yeah, some additional information which is not needed. You only prove that, you're, that you know the, um, the password, for example. Um, the consequence of this zero knowledge um, proof of knowledge is that protocol runs are unlinkable, uh, unlinkable. So this means that you can do the proof today and you can do the proof uh, tomorrow. And as I've said, so no information is transmitted to the, to the verifier other than the fact that you know, um, for example, a secret value. Um, so even if the, the verifier can't recognize you, you also can't say, okay, I don't know who you are, but I know that you are this, this, it was the same user, for example. And even this is uh, not possible with these kind of um, protocols. So there are different uh, applications. So it's not something which is, which is very new. You find it in electronic cache and um, yeah, a lot of, there are a lot of research papers uh, around that. Um, during my research, I did some um, using this for, for smart metering. That was uh, the, um, the scenario was, was um, quite, um, quite the same. A few difference, but um, yeah, generally speaking, um, it was the same. Yeah, so, um, yeah, what is the, the idea of this solution? So the idea is to, to link the location information with, with tickets or one-time tickets. So you have um, two protocols, a uh, get dispenser protocol and a submission protocol. Um, the get dispenser protocol runs only once, and there the... Um, um, yeah, how to say, so I, I would say like, uh, you, yeah, you put your pants off, so you, you authenticate yourself to the, to the provider, you, you say who you are, you, you authenticate yourself, um, and at the response you get is so-called, um, I call it a, um, a ticket dispenser. So like um, ticket dispenser you can think of as a, like as a soap dispenser, and you, you press the dispenser and the soap comes out, and this is a ticket dispenser, so you press it and then tickets come out. And um, so the, the, the smartphone has this, um, this ticket dispenser, and he could create his own um, tickets. And the cool thing about it is he can, um, he can prove that this ticket, tickets he has created are he has created in a correct uh, way. Um, and he also proves that he has a valid um, ticket dispenser. And if you then give every ticket um, like a unique 
timestamp, so it's only valid in a, in, a, in a fixed time slot, for example, every 50 minutes. You can restrict um, the number of data packets per time and per time slot and device. So here's a um, yeah, it's nice figure explained how this works, the get dispenser protocol. So again, it is a user authentication. Um, then you, this um, ticket dispenser is negotiated between the, the provider and the smartphone. Um, what is important is that only the, the smartphone knows the, the dispenser at the end. And then you do something, it's called, um, you can think of it as a, it's a hidden signature scheme. So you put this dispenser in a cryptographic commitment. Um, a, cryptogra a commitment is, if you don't know what a commitment is, you can think of um, it's, a, it's a safe. So I always tell my students, think of it, it's a safe. You can put something in it, then you close the door, and then you can, um, this, this commitment is sent to the, to the provider and the provider can sign the, 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 the content of this um, uh, safe without knowing what is he actually signing. And yeah, then the, the signature um, is sent back. So this is called um, yeah, the CL protocol, Kaminisch-Wysonskaya protocol. Um, yeah. So this protocol runs only once, and then you have the submission protocol, and there you just um, you perform this um, the zero knowledge proof. So you um, you first proof in zero knowledge that you have a valid signature for um, the dispenser, and also the secret key is um, there. You also prove this, then you create a new ticket for the current time interval, and then you also prove in zero knowledge that this ticket was um, correctly created. And you, of course, you send the ticket and the time um, interval or the timestamp and the position data to the provider. And then the, the provider puts these, this ticket um, and the, the timestamp, put it on a blacklist, so you can't the smartphone can use it only once. So if you try it a second time, it wouldn't work because it uh, will be detected by the provider. And he also couldn't, um, he could only, it is assured that he can only, um, the smartphone can only create a ticket um, or can use a ticket only every 50 minutes. So you cannot spam the, the provider with, um, with um, with, with, faked, um, um, with uh, faked position data. Yeah, I've, uh, I've implemented the protocol um, and um, yeah, it's already today, it's quite, um, it's quite practically. One have to say that this was a quick and dirty implementation and um, yesterday I've, I've optimized a lot of uh, things but I couldn't test it on the on the Android mobile phone. So these are the, the old values, so it goes uh, a lot faster. And another cool thing is um, that you can um, pre-compute these tickets. So you can pre-compute um, these tickets, for example, in the background, or for example, if the, the battery is uh, getting recharged. Um, yeah, so this is also a nice, nice um, property. Yeah, discussion, what you um, what I have to, to mention is that um, the data packets can always be linked by their IP address. Um, that is a problem always if you use um, these, um, yeah, these privacy preserving protocols, if you're not using a chromorphic encryption or so, but um, yeah, in general, this is of course always possible, but um, yeah, if you're getting disconnected, um, um, at least in Germany, it's so that the connection is getting disconnected after um, a few hours, 
then you get a new IP and then there's no possibility for Google or for the provider to link these um, two transactions with different IP addresses or you can use Tor or something like this. Um, yeah, the protocol can be um, extended so there, um, this was just uh, the, the first version of it. Um, you can, which I doesn't really like, but you can, there's a possibility to identify misbehaving use, users. So if you send um, tickets too fast, then this could be uh, detected. Um, yeah, you can limit the validity of the ticket dispenser. So I make the benchmark with, uh, with this was equivalent to 1024-bit RSA, so you can um, just force the users to re-authenticate themselves every week or so, and then you can, um, can change the keys or something like this. Yeah, now we come uh, yeah, to the end of my talk. So, um, yeah, I've evaluated the, the Google and Waze protocol regarding the privacy and authenticity requirement. Um, I have shown that anonymity of the user is not assured, that user tracking is possible. Um, yeah, attackers can anonymously manipulate the traffic analysis and actively influence the navigation software. But um, yeah, I've also presented the first um, solution to, um, yeah, to increase the user's privacy and at the same time makes attacks um, yeah, much more difficult. Um, yeah, what is what I've already said during my talk, um, but it's definitely worth mentioning so that this results can be also transferred to every other navigation system which uses um, real-time floating car data because, yeah, you always have the same, uh, they have the same uh, problems. So the users, they want privacy and the, the provider, the um, the, the, um, yeah, the provider wants um, correctness of, of the data. Yeah, I can uh, show you a small demo. It's not really a, a demo. So, I don't know. So my, my results, I will put everything on probably on our, um, on my, my, uh, uh, website so you can download it and yeah feel free to to use it so it's nothing special but so these are for example um, this one route I, I have shown so and it gives you prints out um, yeah the all the information which is included in this packets sent to to Google and yeah, and you can visualize it. Um, uh, Yeah, so yeah, this oh, can you see this? Oh. Uh, first, I want to show you the, the, the attack, which is a little bit more spectacular, but um, yeah, the problem is you need a lot of more time because um, if you want to create a traffic jam, you must create a very small. Uh, um, a car which moves very slow, so you can <coughs> so yeah, this is a, a Pulse script and support this, but um, you have to run it for 
I don't know, half an hour or so and yeah. And actually I'm not pretty sure if I can can show this. I don't know. My boss told me no I don't I shouldn't do this. But yeah. Uh, I don't know, so I will put this on the um on my uh web space. Um I don't know if I leave this attack part in it or not. Uh, yeah, if you're interested and if you show me that you have a good heart, then I will send it to you. And yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, yeah, as you probably have heard, I should um, yeah, you should fill out the black hat evaluation forms and um, yeah. If you have some questions and feel free to, to ask me and yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>